Hello everybody, thank you for letting us talk. I'm not really busy. Uh, so uh, we will uh, present you a uh, code. She wrote the code uh, and we developed uh, the project. You see here uh, in Archaeologies all the funerary information about Iron Age in the Upper Rhine Valley, so between Basel and uh, Karlsruhe more or less, uh, as aggregated uh, in Archaeologies. So, of course, uh, having that kind of results, we needed to automatize uh, the, the treatment and are seemed a good solution. So, that's why we will present you uh, this uh, right now. So, um, to be quick in my presentation, so that you can enjoy more code, just some uh, elements about Archaeologies. It's archaeologies with a K dot org. You can find it online and check it later if you're uh, interested. Um, the project is online since over 10 years in between, so I'd say it's steady. We are version 4, so it's working, uh, more or less. We still have some upgrade issues, but well, it's, it's a living project. Uh, it's an online GIS app where uh, different archaeologists and environmentalists can share data, part or uh, everything of their databases if they wish. And of course we work with archaeologists, but we try also with environmentalists and some other specialists of archaeology. So, and the past. Actually, we have over 80 data sets, uh, almost 100 lines of, 100,000 lines of information, which is very uh, interesting for uh, wanting to do something more uh, with the data, uh, of course. So, um, yes, um, some elements that uh, created the code that we want to present you today. Uh, is the fact that between version 2 and 3 we found out that we needed uh, to follow the INSPIRE rules uh, for data exchange, uh, that we needed to offer to the authors the databases that worked with us a data management plan that we offer if you any need one. And uh, by doing this we also find out that uh, it's complicated, it's an itchy issue for archaeologists uh, how to quote a DOI. There are even some paper publications who refuse a DOI per se, so you have to go back to paper uh, quote, which for database is not very satisfying. And we also had the versioning, uh, versioning uh, question. Uh, so how do we uh, implement this? So in the last version of Archaeologies, this is an example from another colleague using us uh, as a DMP, um, we have the versioning, which make it possible to reproduce uh, the uh, work, but also to quote a database that is in Archaeologies at a point in time, which is very important, of course, for reproducibility of the code. How it works? Well, I'm old enough to be somehow skeptic in a live connection between a computer projects. So we made a choice with a, a CSV sheet, a spreadsheet. It's uh, anybody puts a spreadsheet in, and uh, this is simple. It works. And when you make a query, you get a CSV spreadsheet out that you can push in any kind of software you want, as long as you encode it. In. UTF-8, so uh, it's reusable for the French and the German, which, are, which is our main problem in the Upper uh, Rhine Valley. So, um, once the different uh, databases are in, there's this small uh, tool that makes it possible for the users, also for the non-GIS profis or non the non-databases specialists, to crawl through these databases. And we also try to implement, so it's a, a simple uh, parent-child system, you know, uh, the structure, funeral structures, graves. But the author can say, oh, the tumuli graves are exceptional. So I decide this one is exceptional. And we also try to code this. And Lizzie will mention it several times in her speech. That's why I uh, re-explain this. So... Um, it's very simple when you use it. You see which databases uh, came out. You select the one you want or the one you do not want for your request. And uh, you can uh, then um, 
test uh, the data and use them for something else. And this is what this is going to show you uh, in the rest of the time. <laughs> so, uh, the code that I will present has been written in order to test hypothesis modeling with R. <coughs> we also wanted to test both software and modeling to convince, to convince the non-digital archaeologist of the interest of the tool. For these reasons, we choose to answer a question for which a consensus already exists and automated it by coding it for a large set of data. Furthermore, we wanted to use the different database, data sets extracts that are shared in the archaeologist platform. Indeed, the use of this platform would allow us to reproduce this test on different sets of data. For these reasons, we decided to work on how to recognize exceptional so-called princely tombs in the Upper Rhine Valley during the late Alstadt period. Indeed, the Rhine Valley is an area for which exceptional sites are already known through the literature. Moreover, almost all the avail available data uh, in the area uh, is encoding and characterized in the platform. So uh, the data used for these studies comes from an, exp an archaeologist export from March 2017. This query was funerary monuments dated between 800 and 261 BC, which means from Alstadt C to Latin B, in an area encompassing the Rhine Valley. This query represents 700 sites corresponding to one burial mound or a group of tumuli that one can extract from archaeologists in a CSV format, as Lou said. In order to uh, realize our statical, statistical test, we needed the five levels of characterization, counting the exceptional one that was shown to you uh, just before and the localization information. This data was separated into four databases depending on chronological phases to take into account difference in funerary offerings through the period. So this is not a complete inventory, but only <coughs> the aggregation of the available data. These data have been input by different authors from different sources and different scales of research. So the quality of information is not the same for all the databases, and some of them will be more precise than others. It also means that there could be multiple points for the same site. Moreover, the archaeological sites that they describe were not necessarily excavated, excavated or, or dated, so I didn't use uh, those, those last for this test. The idea of the study is to highlight the archaeological sites described as exceptional uh, and th that the ones that are marked as such on the platform. In order to emphasize the worth of a grave, I use traditional markers as, for example, weaponry, sword in particular, jewelry, harness, or metallic crockery, but also try to use a characteri characterization exceptional that offers the possibility for researchers to define uh, such extraordinary features. For example, months which size is over 10 times bigger than average, or grave goods with gold and ivory. So here you have uh, the code that I use. Uh, on this slide, you, uh, you have also the data sets that I use for doing uh, the tests. So in order to highlight these elements, we use their percentage of relative frequency based on the standardization of the data in the four levels of depths in archaeologists. The idea was to record the textual information in numerical values based on how exceptional the funds in the tumuli were. The high number would mean a rare frequency, whereas a low number would mean a common frequency. For example, simple ceramics would be revalued with the level 1, whereas a wagon would get the, the value 5. We also attributed five points for the tumuli already marked as exceptional in the database. This would give them an even more higher value, but could also highlight tombs for which we don't have enough information. The aim is then to add these values according to the archaeological sites in order to determine which has the higher value and would be considered as exceptional. In order to change the textual information into numerical value, we use the revalue function to attribute a numerical value for each of the characteristics in archaeologists. This operation was made easier by the ontology of the platform because the database's author would 
uh, have to use the same characteristics to describe the fonts. Then we change the values into numerical ones with the as numeric function. I will not develop here the choices made to choose which value to attribute for each element in each level of characterization because, because it would take too long here. So to add the value, we needed first to sum the five levels of characterization for each row of the databases. We did it by adding two columns in the database, one with and one without the exceptional value in our QGIS. After that, we added th these sums according to the site ID, name, and localization in order to get the exceptional value for each individual site. And finally, for a more visual understanding, we used the map view package to highlight the, re the results of these sums on a map. On the maps, uh, we can see that there are actually archaeological sites with a high value even if they do not correspond exactly with the one marked in archaeologies. And that is what is interesting. This, there, there are several reasons why this difference can be explained. First of all, in the Agano forest, uh, there is no artifact associated with the burial mounds. One of the authors of the databases used uh, for this sector marked them as exceptional from their size, and this information is not accessible in our data. On the other end, in the other database, we only have the artifacts, but they could not be linked in the, with the, to the burial months in the first database. Then, in archaeologists, the exceptional characteristic is based on the free will of an author, which means that the condition can be different for each of them. In this study, we use only the data available on the platform, which is the, the artifacts and the burials themselves. We also studied them in their entirety and not the distinctive characteristic of an area. But there is on these maps exceptional, exceptional sites which are not marked in archaeologies. We can mention this Olungen in, uh, in south and, uh, and north, sorry, and Nord Norduz in the, no uh, the south, <laughs> for example. This shows that the study allows us to distinguish sites which can be considered as exceptional based on their contents. How, however, we have to put things in perspective. Holungen is actually an exceptional burial, but because it contain, contains 18 tombs with high quality artifacts and not just one. So, to conclude, this is a heuristic study which allows us to highlight reasoning de developed only in literature. But even if the data is available, making it easier to work with, in order to produce definitive maps and an important adjustment of the data will be necessary. We would have to merge duplication, for example. For it to be more accurate, we could also go back to the data itself and the bibliography in order to make the perfect database, but this was not the purpose of this test. Moreover, the interest of this modelization resides in its reproduci reproducibility Indeed, because of the standardization of the data in archaeologies, the same calculation can be redone in any other reg region as long as the data is available with the same ontology. Furthermore, the scale of value can easily be changed if one thinks that it does not correspond to its idea of exceptional. In the future, we will work on a method in order to produce reproducible process of archaeologies' data merging in R. Thank you for listening. Thank you.